We are back again, everybody, to doing life with Ken and Tabitha. Yes. So excited to have you guys joining in on our show. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we believe you're not here by an accident, but God's brought you to us and us to you. How you feel about it, sweetie? I feel good. Yeah. You know, I'm just so excited to be here and just to be able to share today. Yeah. There's so many things that, you know, people could do, but the fact that you would be willing to sit here and listen to and us hang and out with us hang out with us yeah. share with you some things that we learned and yeah. hopefully it can help your life be better it's just i don't know <laughs> what else yeah. would you rather do well that's what the podcast is about we simply want to help you um, grow closer to god and to the people that god has placed in your life and so we're building an online community that we can just simply yeah. do life with so we've been married 23 years 23 we've been good for 21 years the first two years wasn't very good mm -hmm. but out of that a lot of our content was born mm -hmm. because we really have ministered to married people around the world and we see principles and parallels yeah. of what good relationships do and what sucky relationships do or maybe what they don't do. Mm. And um, so we want to share our good and our bad. This is not just a, hey, we got it all figured out. It's more like a podcast where we're figuring it out. But yeah. after 23 years, we're best friends. We have figured some things There's out. There's a lot we have figured out. And we're going to share all yeah. of it with you. All right. Yeah. So I'm excited about today. Today's segment and show mm -hmm. is called, what do we call them? Episode? It's called Five Things Every Man needs to know about a woman Oof. all right and um yes people we are back on this topic i don't know if we've released this yet i don't know where it is in the queue but we also have five things that every woman needs to know about a man and it, it's oop, it's eye-opening y'all you gotta grab hold of this one so it's either just came out or it's about to come out just depending upon what our team does and so i didn't you know sometimes when you do something that's pointed towards a woman all of the women are like, well, what about the man? <laughs> and then when you do stuff to, towards the man, <laughs> the men don't care. No, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're never like, what about the woman? But I, I, so we're an equal opportunity ministry. Come and on. so we got five things that every man <laughs> needs to know about a woman. And if you are a man or if you are a person who knows a man, get them this episode. Wow. It's going to be enlightening. All right. Number one is that she wants your attention more than your provision. Mm, yeah, that's good. I think, you know, speaking as a wife, mm -hmm. um, I, if I know that you care about me uh -huh. um, and that like I have your attention, that I have your affection, uh -huh. um, that you support me and, you know, you have my back, like you, I'm there for you. Is that how you hear attention? Like affection? And maybe that's almost even better. Yeah, yeah, like I do. Needs your attention, affection, mm -hmm encouragement what other superlative mm -hmm. would you put there like what do you, what do you need as a woman from a man because when it comes to provision i mm -hmm. think a lot of men say well i provide for my family yeah. i work three jobs i work 60 hours i'm a provider i'm a provider but provision is not just financial provision mm -hmm. provision is almost like emotional provision yeah. um, sexual provision relational mm -hmm. provision spiritual provision there's all kinds of different mm -hmm. provisions. And so I know it's wordplay. She needs your attention more than your prevention. But how big is attention to you? What do you need? Well, I think like as, as far as attention, like uh -huh. it's, you know, when we were dating and you, I knew that you wanted me uh -huh. because you pursued me. You gave me your attention. Mm -hmm. If I had a bad day, you were there for me. Mm -hmm. um, you would listen to what I had to say. You interviewed me and asked me questions about my childhood, my whole life. You just, you wanted to know about me. Mm -hmm. And those are part of the things that made me fall in love with you, to trust you. And it just let me know that you loved me and you cared for me. So now after 23 years of being marriage, I, married, I still, I still want you to pursue me in that way. I still want you to listen to me. I still want to know that I have your attention, whether it's through the outfit I put on. I want you to notice the outfit that I wear. I want you to notice when I do my hair differently, you know, not to like, ah, you know, I did my hair like I flipped it to the other side. And now you don't, you know, right. not like stupid stuff, but I just want you to I want to have your attention. I would love to know, is that a common woman thing or is that a you thing? Do you think it's a common woman thing that th she needs attention? Mm -hmm. I think it's a common woman thing. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think that every woman, um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I, I can't say every, but I'll say that most women, most women want to want to hear you say you're beautiful, yeah. that I love you. So even like every day, I, 
uh, you could tell me 10 times a day that you love me, and I want to hear it all 10 times a day. From a man's perspective, um, I don't know if inwardly we are built for the, the chase or the kill. Mm -hmm. And it's almost in marriage relationships, well, I got that. Let me move on to the next thing I need to get. Mm -hmm. Or at least I feel like that's how some men treat their marriage. Yeah, It's almost like, man, I'll take you to dinner. I'll wine you and dine you. I'll figure out your favorite colors, your favorite food, your favorite everything. I'll do all of these things to get you. But mm -hmm. after I get you, then I want to go and I want to get money. I want to I want to get a business. I want to get this. And it's like, then I'm on to the next thing. And marriage is funny because when you get married, you can't stop trying to impress your wife or yeah. stop trying to romance her, date her and pursue her. So now you have to kind of set the goal mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. So now we're married, but I want my marriage to be here. And then when we get here, I want it to be there. And at 20 years, I want our sex life to be here and I want our savings to be here. And so um, I just think a lot of guys wrestle with the, um, not the obtaining, but the maintaining of yeah. the marriage. So yeah. what you're saying is that as a woman, as long as we are together, you need consistent, continual affection, attention, focus, mm -hmm. anything else, mm -hmm. encouragement. Mm -hmm. You want me to notice when your um, your hair changes, like it was straight, now it's curly. You want me to see if you get a new outfit. Mm -hmm. Anything else falls in that? Um, yeah, it's, it's it's noticing. It's Because I want you to notice and I want you to be like, oh, you're beautiful. I want you to be like, oh, you're, you know, I, I want to know that you're attracted to me. I want to know that after three babies, uh -huh. you still love me. I don't know. It kind of feels like maybe could that be a little black hole, though? Because it's mm -hmm. almost like um, um, I don't know. Does it does it could there be anything where you just need me to say that for your security? What I guess I should say that for your security. Mm -hmm. That's your point. Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah, it's it, some of I it is know. security. Because I don't know. for dudes, it just feel like, well, I already said that and I said it yesterday and I said it last week. How much do you want me to say it? Yeah. I mean, and, and that's a conversation, you okay. know, it's a conversation if you want to have a conversation. Um, but I think that it is just similar to a man when, you know, you, there's so many things that you deal with in a day. A woman has those same issues and a lot for the women, it's just tearing down her self-esteem, um, comparison, uh, social media. You're not skinny uh, enough. Yeah. You're not, you're not skinny enough. enough. You're not young you're not, enough. You have wrinkles now, yeah. you know, like all of these things. Um, and, she just wants to know yeah. that, you know, you, she's still the apple of your eye. You know, the Bible says it this way, that a man is supposed to love his wife like Christ loved the church and mm -hmm. gave himself for it. That's a powerful principle mm -hmm. that as a husband, I'm supposed to love you yeah. with this kind of selfless, sacrificial love that is only best exemplified through Jesus's death on the cross. Mm -hmm. And so what I know about me as a husband to you is that I owe you love and that you deserve my love and that you're also built to receive that love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, we live in a day and time where it's almost like um, some women are so independent. It's almost like I don't even need a man. I don't need you love me. But you're actually been created by God to need love. Yeah. I'm not saying that you need a man to be fulfilled like you don't have to be married but you do need men in mm -hmm. your life. You mm -hmm. need uncles, brothers. You need spiritual fathers. You mm -hmm. need men in your life just like men need women in their life. But what, I guess what I'm saying is that I actually owe you love. Yeah. I actually, you and you need that love. Yeah. God has hard, hardwired and you I for that love. And I think if, we take, a, if we, we take a step back and we look at, you know, the father's role in a daughter's life, mm -hmm. like we are very intentional with you telling our children, our daughters, right. you are beautiful. Yeah. Because, you know, what happened for me, I didn't have a father in my life. Uh -huh. And so the first boy that came around and said, you're beautiful and I love you, well, that was it. You know, right. I, I, I thirsted. Uh -huh. I was hungry and thirsty and I wanna, for uh, someone it, to say you're beautiful and, and, and I love you. it's not just because you were hungry and thirsty, but God made you. God, yeah. To need that affirmation yeah, from a man. Yeah, that and affirmation. If the father didn't give it to you. Mm -hmm. You were looking for another male. I was voice. looking for it someplace and some else. Some people will hear that and be like, oh, you're just weak. No, that's how you've been actually created. And it's not a bad thing, but Satan will take things mm -hmm. and he'll pervert it. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so mm -hmm. you need to be loved. Mm -hmm. You feel like I do a good job loving you. Where, where else could I do a better job loving you? Um, where could you do a better job loving me? I think, um, I think you do a really good job loving me. Okay. Um, I think that you could probably do better in just those things and in, in saying, I think you say, I love you. I probably tell you, I love you probably a whole lot. Um, and I tell you that you, I give you compliments a whole lot. I uh -huh. think you could give me more compliments and tell me that you love me. 
Yeah. I know you do, and I'm not that needy. Yeah. But I think, okay. you know, oftentimes we give, you know how everyone has a love language, mm -hmm. and you could kind of... Um, like, for instance, we have a sister-in-law, Tina, right? She, her love language is gifts. Like, if you get her a gift, it means everything. Mm -hmm. And therefore, she gives gifts. Like, she, like, get that, that means so much to her. So I know that I'm going to love her according to her way, uh, you know, that she, I'm going to give her gifts. Her love language. You know, that's her love language. Um, but part of the reason why I know that's her love language is because she's always showering us with gifts. Okay. And so for you, I always shower you with, I love you, I love you, I love you. You probably like, do I get on your nerves ever? But the last time I remember your love language is you scored high in quality time and physical touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely. And then it was third words of affirmation. But are you saying that, forget that test, I want to be. No, <laughs> no, but it is, I mean, maybe perhaps I'm saying you do wonderful on quality time and touch like you got those down but the question was how can I do more what can I do more of okay and that would be okay. something that doesn't really matter that much to me but it matters right so okay yeah. note to self well I got it all right here's the second thing all right of how every man or what every um, man needs to understand of a woman mm -hmm. number two is she really wants you to take the lead yeah. she really wants you to take the lead mm -hmm. and I think there are a lot of um, women that are leading in their homes and they haven't, they're leading because maybe they have to lead, not necessarily because they want to. And then there are some who want to lead, but really in, a, in, in the context of the husband and wife relationship, biblically, that man should be taking a lead a yeah. little bit. So, yeah. I, yeah. I, and I think when it comes to, um, you know, God's definition of marriage, uh -huh. that the man is the head of the household, uh -huh. um, the covering for the wife, the yeah. protector for the wife, the provider for the wife, uh -huh. um, that when we align ourselves with the biblical definition of marriage, now when a woman has to take the lead, she hasn't been graced yeah. to do that. Yeah. She hasn't been prepared, equipped. Right. It's not really her responsibility to do that. And right. so she, she's stepping outside of her comfort zone. Well, I feel like we're burning women out. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of ladies, and I know we did one about um, a segment about being tired, but there's a lot of women that are completely exhausted mm -hmm. because they are consistently playing a role that mm -hmm. they were never created to play by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that a woman can't be a leader. And I sometimes that. speaking I see that in the Bible. Yeah, right. But what I'm saying is that um, sometimes we're leading because the man isn't doing his part. Right. And I think what I want a man to hear today is that, bruh, it's time for you to step up yeah. and take the leadership role. And I want to define leadership and headship in just yeah. a moment, but I want to hear what you were about to say. I wanted to add to what you were saying. Yes, uh -huh. sometimes the man just needs to step up. Like yeah. he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, but sometimes the woman just needs to step up, step back uh -huh. and let him lead and not be contentious and can just you, follow what he's saying. Can you unpack that a little bit for me? What do you um, mean by that? Well, she because, needs to step back. You know, well, uh -huh. because we're, I'm a woman just, you know, I'm a person you like gonna, you are. You say I'm a woman just like you. <laughs> for real? You know, you are the furthest thing <laughs> okay, woman. away from a woman. But like, okay, so I went to college. I have an education. I'm smart. Yeah. You know, like I can make money. I you, can do all of those things. You're a boss yeah. lady. I'm, you know, you, I'm you, gifted. I'm anointed. Yeah. You know, God you, you will run me over if yes, I let you. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And Lord so what I found is that, um, yeah, I've often had to just like realize, okay, my idea, we can go with my, with what I say to do uh -huh. and, you know, we might be okay, mm -hmm. but we can also go with what you say to do. Like my way is not the only way. And I have had to trust in the institution of marriage, uh -huh. how God ordained marriage, how God set it up and say, okay, I have an idea too, but I'm just going, he's smart. I'm going to follow him. Well, it's, you're going to submit. I'm going to submit. To my leadership. Now, that brings me back to defining mm -hmm. leadership and headship. Mm -hmm. Because I think there, I don't know what's happened. And I don't know how common this is. Maybe people will let us know. But it almost feels like when you talk about and you say like the man is the head of the family. Mm -hmm. Or um, I need to submit to him. Mm -hmm. There's almost this subconscious disdain. Almost like, well, I don't need him to do that for me. I'm not saying for everybody, but I'm saying in our culture altogether, it feels like, well, I'm just as good as he is. Why does he take the lead? I don't think we've understood what leadership and headship is. Mm -hmm. Leadership and headship is not a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. It's not like being an emperor. It's not like being a king. Mm -hmm. It's not like um, I got this leader who's up here and everybody else is some peasants. It's actually 
Um, Jesus exemplified leadership, which was servant leadership, Mm -hmm. where he washed his disciples' feet. And so it's not on the top. It's actually that you're on the bottom pushing everybody else up. Now, from a wife, you would put yourself on the bottom pushing everybody else up. And I believe if everybody gets on the bottom, instead of trying to get it on the top, we can actually flow in biblical (laughs) harmony. But... um, But I think that needs to be redefined because Mm -hmm. when people hear leadership, they hear dictatorship, Mm -hmm. but leadership and what you submit to is actually um, responsibility. Mm -hmm. So as a man, when I say I'm the head, I'm saying that I am the responsible one. Absolutely. I am the covering for you and our kids. I am the priest of our home. I am the head servant of this house. Yeah. And I'm smart enough to listen to you because mm-hmm. I married you, mm-hmm. but I'm also at the end of the day, if there's a decision that has to be made, I'm going to make the decision just like a head coach, so just good. like a president. And then I'm going to take the reward or the consequences with the decision that I make because yeah. that's what responsibility is. Mm-hmm. And so when a wife understands that that is the biblical order for the marriage, it's not a less than position to submit because it takes two equals to actually submit. Absolutely. So when you decide to bow the knee and let's say, I want to do this and you want to do that. And we went back and forth. We've given it some time and we've prayed about mm-hmm. it. And you say, OK, we're going to go with you. Mm-hmm. That is just like the vice president. All of the weight is coming on the president. All of the weight is not on the assistant coach. It's on the head coach. And the head coach is going to be the first to get fired. And I am the first one to be persecuted. I'm the first one to receive those lashes on my back for a lack of understanding. I'm the first one because I'm covering you so you don't have to feel what I feel. That's so good. Mm -hmm. It's in, in, in you sometimes like as women, we can fight against each other because of society and, you know, the culture that we live in saying that, you know, well, I don't, you know, I don't have to submit and I don't, why do I have to listen to what he says when we enter into like this marriage covenant yeah. and that's how it's been set up mm-hmm. we want because this is the thing she really wants you to take the lead mm-hmm. and so women like we want the man to we want do him you? to be a man yes we do okay we do we mm-hmm. like it's just like we want him to be a man yeah. we want like if somebody comes and mess with messes with us the first thing we do is call our man call our husband we want someone to say baby come here i got uh, you like we love that safety so, protection and security mm-hmm. of a man mm-hmm. but you know, we it, oftentimes we get into that relationship and when it comes to like letting him lead, mm-hmm. then we kind of rise up a little bit. Well, I can do this and I don't have to do what you say I could do. But, we, you know, we buck up against the institution, the system, the way God made marriage. Mm-hmm. And it's just sometimes we just have to step back. It's counterproductive to it's the counterproductive. purpose and the callings of God on our life. And we see this like, okay, in the Bible with with Adam and Eve, this is so fascinating. I uh-huh. saw this the other day with Adam and Eve. And so, you okay. know, Adam and Eve, they're in the garden. God says, don't eat at the fruit of the tree of the, uh-huh. the knowledge of good and evil. Um, he gave this commandment to Adam. Mm-hmm. And then Eve goes around, she takes the fruit, she eats of it and tells Adam to eat the fruit. Mm-hmm. Adam then eats the fruit and, you know, listens to her. And so then God shows up on the scene and he doesn't call for Eve. He calls for Adam. The responsible one. Why does he call for Adam? Because he didn't tell Eve. He told Adam. Why did he tell Adam? Mm -hmm. Um, He told Adam and then Adam was supposed to tell Eve. He was supposed to lead. He was supposed to lead. He was supposed to lead. He was supposed to be the spiritual leader, the head. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is when the man doesn't lead Uh and when the woman says, okay, well, if you ain't lead, I'm going to leave here. Take this fruit, eat it. I think you should do what I do. And now look what happens. So when there's that kind of imbalance, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. in in our marriage, it all falls apart. So what I'm hearing you say is that you want me to lead yes. as a woman, as a woman of God, at least yes. you desire your husband. Let's because just, I'm not you threatened. Uh-huh. I, I know who I am. Okay. I know who God's called me to be. And I'm not threatened by your leadership. I'm not threatened by you being the head of uh-huh. our family and our house. I'm not threatened by you being the king because I know I'm the queen. Wow. Wow. I mean, we could go on on. So you're not threatened. You're actually inspired, yes, covered, protected, and secure yes. by me taking the lead. And I will I, support you. I will have your back. Oh, man, this is good. I don't know. I just feel like, man, it's time to step up. Yes. You know? And I don't think it's just take the lead, like, financially. I don't think it's just take the lead as a parent. I think it's also take the lead spiritually. Mm. For too long, we've seen women Definitely. leading spiritually. So the men will come and drop their wife and kids off at church and then go to play golf or be at home or work another job. First Definitely. off, I'm not dropping my family off at another man's house, whether it be the house of God or whoever it is. I'm going with you. Secondly, um, if there's any area for us to lead in, tell me if I'm telling the truth. Mm-hmm. 
you want to see a man, you want a man, you want a husband that prays. Absolutely. You want a husband that fasts. You want a husband that leads in worship. Mm-hmm. You want a husband that hears from God. You want a husband that is a prophet of the house. You mm-hmm. want a husband. We Come need on. men. We don't, for years the pews have been filled with women, and thank God for it. Mm-hmm. Thank God that somebody was doing coming to the house of God right. when everybody else was out doing whatever. Right. But now it's time. I'm just hearing this: the season for men to step into their rightful yes. roles. Yes. It's not just leaders, but spiritual roles. leaders. Of yes. The home. Absolutely. And I believe like back to the example of Adam and Eve, yeah. Adam, his his role was to teach, mm-hmm. to be a spiritual teacher. He should have taught her the law of God, yeah. the commands of God. Yeah. And I think nowadays in our households is fathers, uh-huh. you know, we teach the father <laughs> should be teaching the children. I mean, we, m- moms can teach too, but yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, so it's so powerful true. when we look at how God, like marriage is yeah. the oldest institution. It's the first institution, you know, the Bible. Um, I don't know. I think it was in, I, I forget what the book of the Bible was. Uh, Malachi maybe called Bible, a holy in called marriage, a holy institution. Mm. It's like, yeah. Wow. God is good. <laughs> We're privileged to be in this holy institution of marriage. That's good. That's good. Let's go on to number three. Three things that every man needs to know about a woman. Mm. You having fun so far? I'm having fun. <laughs> she can handle more than what you think she can. Oh, she absolutely. can handle more than what she what you think she can. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I see a lot of guys. It's almost like they want to protect their wives from certain things, so mm-hmm. they keep them in the dark. Mm-hmm. But I found out that you can handle more than what I think you can. Mm-hmm. Um, what comes to mind there? Um, I think now this is like in that relationship between like, you know, a husband and a wife when maybe like maybe you want to protect her and keep her from certain things like I'm not going to tell her that we're struggling in our finances right now. Well, that's what comes to mind. So I've had guys Mm -hmm. like and the family goes through something, let's say a financial storm. And it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't want my wife to know that one. Um, No, I don't 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 tell her I got it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or um even when it comes to temptation, like instead of opening up and saying, hey, I'm, I'm attracted to this woman that I work with. I don't want her. I just want you to know. So now I, want, I don't think my wife could handle that. She might get jealous. She might get that. And that might be the case. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is that many times, I don't know. Let me just talk about my situation mm-hmm. with you. I feel like when I go through something, I don't want to go through it alone. Because when I tell you, I feel like um, we actually Our struggles are different struggles. Yeah. So let's say that I'm having something, a really hard thing. Like right now I got something that I'm doing that's really, really hard. I don't feel that it's hard to you. Mm -mm. Um, And then when you go through something that's really, really hard, it's not necessarily hard to me. And I think we balance each other. 90% of the time our fights are not the same fights. There is nobody on this planet that I would rather come to with my temptations, fears, concerns, and struggles than you mm-hmm. because you know me as, as close as I know myself or even more sometimes that you can prophetically speak into, that you can build up, and that you can encourage. So I would actually do myself a disservice by not letting you in. Like uh, men will let you into the winds. Baby, we're going to Bermuda. Baby, we're going on a cruise. Baby, I closed that deal. But what I'm suggesting, and I think what the what the statement is, is that I want to let you into the losses, mm-hmm. my pain, my struggle, yeah. because you can actually help build me. And you're stronger than what I think you mm-hmm. are. That, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it is true in that um, we, you know, we have the ability to kind of support you, um, to incubate our husbands. We have a supply for you. When you say you. incubate, what does that mean? Or, or not incubate the husband, uh-huh. in- incubate um, vision dreams uh-huh. you know your vision where you're going simply so if I tell you sweetheart I want to be debt free in 10 years you're the one that incubates it mm-hmm. you're the one that can mull it over pray about it continue hey baby didn't you say that you know we shouldn't be buying that because you said three years ago mm-hmm. we we're gonna be out of debt we got another seven mm-hmm. years you're an incubator yes like yes that. absolutely and also we have a supply for you and so a lot of the things that you go through like who else is praying for you more than your wife you know, who else is, you know, like just going to be there for you, whether you do good or bad, like yeah. we're going to be there for you. Yeah. And so what I find is like when you're bothered about them, I mean, there are things that you just get bothered about uh-huh. and you'll come to me and it's like, I have a supply for you. Yeah. It, it doesn't even bother me the mm-hmm. way that it would bother you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I can pour out, you know, whatever it is that the Lord is saying or whatever I want to encourage you with. And it's no stress to me. Yeah. And it actually is healthy for both you and I in our relationship. Right. 
That's so good. Okay, number four, um, every what a man needs to know about a woman would be women are emotionally built differently than men. Mm. Women are emotionally built yeah. differently than men. And Bubba, we need you to know that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. can, you, can you talk to that? Oh, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think if if you look at the way, you know, men are built, like men are built to provide, yeah. you know, to go to war, to protect, um, to fight, to mm-hmm. till the land, uh-huh. like, um, you know, and like to, to carry those heavier, you know, matters, responsibilities. responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and the woman is built to kind of nurture uh-huh. and, um, you know, take care of the family, to raise kids, Uh to, like I said before, incubate, Uh to bring health to situations. And those roles doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Of course, we have traditional roles, but Mm -hmm. sometimes the man is the the stay-at-home dad and he's the cook and he's the nurturer and that's okay. But what you're talking about is just in general. Yeah, in general. Uh Um, (laughs) And um, especially, yeah, in those roles between a husband and wife. Um, But I think that... Uh, yeah, emotionally, we can just pour out. Mm. Um, it's it's not, it, when a woman acts and does something, I mean, she could be washing the dishes, mm-hmm. but there's soul into it. Mm-hmm. Like it, when I wash the dishes, I do the dishes a certain way. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If I clean the house, I'm doing it a certain way. If like, so I put my whole self in a lot of things. Okay. You know, women can be maybe more vibrant and colorful and come to life, like mm-hmm. you know, decorating and cooking and cleaning and doing all these things. Again, again, I'm saying you know these traditional roles, but mm-hmm. we rule the house for yeah. the most part. Yeah. You know, this is our territory, yeah. and so we put our whole self into things. Uh-huh. And um, I think that's worth, you know, a, a man should know that. Uh, okay. I, I don't know. You can speak for, for men. I don't know if you um, are so emotionally kind of like. Well, I think that the average guy probably feels like I'm at work. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go real traditional. Mm-hmm. I'm at work eight, nine, ten hours a day and I come home and um, they might not even know what their wife did. Now, many people are both folk, you know, both in careers and stuff, but still that guy kind of comes home and is like, maybe not understand what the woman has done all day Mm -hmm. and maybe doesn't understand her battle or anything. Oh yeah. And I think men are more in touch with, but I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And so, well, even from a um, biblical definition of a wife as a helpmate, Mm -hmm. I think, let's just say for me, I'm always looking for you to help. Mm -hmm. And I never really think that you need my help. I know I help you a lot, right? But I'm never like, I'm always like, man, I could use some help. Man, I could use some help. My, man, I could use some help. But I'm sure there are seasons where you need some help as yeah, well. You're just definitely. like done. So um, I don't know. Do you want to speak to that? <clears throat> Let me make sure. I I don't know if I know what you're saying. So, yeah, I mean, definitely there's mm-hmm. times where, you know, like, yeah, I, I feel like I help you with everything. And I help you in different ways. Like, you know, find your keys. You know, where's your wallet? Like no, that well, kind of help. No, I'm talking but, more like emotional um, so the question is, women are, the statement is women are built differently emotionally. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean? What does that mean? So how does that flush out into our everyday life? Yeah, How does that flush it? I, I think, you know, when you say that, uh-huh. um, I, I'm going to talk about the physical in a minute because I okay. think it more is more like the physical yeah, thing that there. we're talking about, not emotional. It's sending me down a, a different path. Uh-huh. But with emotion, like that's we say women's intuition. Uh-huh. I think there's a, a women, you know, like we are very emotionally aware uh-huh. more so than what men are. And so like if you come in the house and you're feeling a certain way, I know it. Uh-huh. I'm going to know about it. I know what the kids are doing. Like I know all of this stuff. And uh-huh. so like we, we we have it in us to act, you know, on our emotions, I think maybe more so than men. But I think to answer your question, I would go more on the physical side and being just taxed uh-huh. and, um, you know, like a woman feeling tired and um, a man not really understanding what she goes through in a day. Yeah, talk about and that. So like, uh, so you know, women have jobs, women take care of kids, uh-huh. uh, women take do everything that men that that men do yes um but then women have things like you know if, if i were to say that a man should know is we were built differently in our bodies like we have a menstrual cycle every 28 days mm-hmm. every 28 days we bleed and i don't think you hear that talk well, talked about a lot as a man 
I know that it, but I don't know it. Yeah, but, like I know it, but I can never feel it. Yeah, you. So can't I feel don't it. really know what you're going and, through, and, that's and fine. it's like uh, you shouldn't. Uh-huh. But these, these, this is emotional uh-huh. and physical. For it's taxing on our bodies. Uh-huh. So you know, we bleed for five days. Uh-huh. Every we have PMS for for five days. So uh-huh. there's like 20 days in the month where we might feel okay. Uh-huh. And so we have hormonal fluctuations. We have menopause. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? When there's whole other issues going on, we have babies. When we're pregnant, there's hormones hormones going on. After we have the baby, there's hormones everywhere. So for in a women in a woman's life, there are many times where we're kind of like on this roller coaster up and down uh-huh. and we're always trying to maintain. So sometimes we may be more tired than others just depending on the time of month that it is in our hormone cycle or whatever. And sometimes we could be immense, you know, emotionally exhausted because you know, we have PMS and the kids are crying and, you know, I had a hard day at work and now I come home and, and you just want me to be all lovey dovey and just like whatever. And I'm like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> you know, like, please hear me, you know, um, and pay attention to what's going on in my life to know that. Well, I think maybe sometimes a man can be little. Some of the things you do, like mm-hmm. going to a doctor's appointment or taking the kids to a dentist appointment yeah. or um, talking to teachers at school or looking at a uh, great card, stuff like that. But I feel that those are probably emotional matters as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. definitely. All of that. I mean, it's different than going to the doctor for yourself. Like mm-hmm. if I'm taking my kids, like, okay, yeah, and I handle that. But when you take your kids, when your kid's not feeling well, mm-hmm. you know, when your kid has a fever, mm-hmm. it's just, it's emotional. We all, it, we all go through it. We get over it, but you got to know at the end of the day that mm-hmm. we've been through some stuff. So as a woman, what would you want the everyday man to know when I say a woman is built emotionally different? Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that comes to mind as a woman that you feel like everyday man needs to know this about how you're you're built? Mm-hmm. Um, no, I would just, you know, I would just say that to know that we are, um, we have grace to do. We have grace to go through every day. Uh-huh. We have grace for our menstrual cycles. We have grace for menopause, um, all of that. But it's not so easy. Mm-hmm. It's it's hard. Mm-hmm. A lot of our days are hard, mm-hmm. and um, we would just. I don't know. I, I feel yeah, I like think men need to know that that your days are hard. Mm-hmm. Um, they might be different than mm-hmm. what his day is, but your days yeah. are hard. They're feminine days, you know, like. It, it, uh-huh. You you men are masculine and, and you you have kind of you know like manly kind of issues I feel like but mm-hmm. women we 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 work hard and we play hard and, and we give out. we pour and out you everything you protect we will give everything provide. we will pour everything out we will pour out to our children we'll make sure they have enough food but we don't mm-hmm. we'll make sure our kids are clothed um with the nicest clothes but we don't mm-hmm. we'll make sure that all the bills are paid mm-hmm. we'll make sure that our coworkers got the you know their, their projects done well we will do everything we will pour out in every area of our lives and sometimes too often we find ourselves at the end of the day and we're just done right so my hope is for men is that we would um know that acknowledge mm-hmm. it and maybe do what we can to try to build up our, our mm-hmm. women Mm-hmm. You know, but number five, last but not least, is that the wife, mom, wife slash mom uh, will give her life for the family. And you just need to be aware of that. And I guess that's what you were saying. Yeah, definitely. That you give up everything. Yeah. Uh, can you- and, and the reason why a man needs to know that is because I feel like you do a really good job in supporting me with this and helping me with this. Oh, yeah. Tell people. Now, I know because throughout the years uh-huh. now, I'm, I know my weaknesses. You okay. know, I know that, okay, girl, say no. Uh-huh. Okay. You're doing too much. You uh-huh. can't go everywhere. You can't do everything. Okay. Adjust your schedule. You're in control of it. Like I, I have that now, but I know, you know, um, in the beginning when we were having children and things like that, you would, you would have to step in mm-hmm. and be like, look, okay. You would actually listen to me. Mm-hmm. Tell me what's going on. Why are you so exhausted? Mm-hmm. Well, the kids and the appointments and I'm trying to work and, and you would actually, okay, you sleep in today. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow you sleep in. I'm going to take the kids to school. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, no, let us, we've had times where, okay, I'm going to hire somebody to come in and clean the house because you just, this is too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me take on more responsibilities. I'll do the finances. You stop doing the finances. I got this now. Mm -hmm. So it's just, that's how a man could help when you know that she will work herself to the bone. Right, 
Well, and this is this is rich mm -hmm. because a lot of men don't know that, mm -hmm. and they could kill their wives. They could they could just not kill them like literally stress, anxiety, like the just, pressure of it all. Too much on them. The division of labor is not equal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You work nine to five, and then you watch TV for four or five hours. She works nine to five, and then you want her to cook, clean, take care of the kids, do all of the homework. The division of labor has to be agreed upon, mm -hmm. and it needs to be um, more towards the center. I'm not saying it's 50-50 because every person has a different grace on Absolutely. their life and can handle different things. At different times. But, yeah, and, I, and, I, and that's what that was. That example that you just gave me is that there's times where you might be over the finances, and then I say, okay, bills aren't getting paid, and I say, okay, what's going on? Well, I got this, that, and the other. I say, okay, well, now we need to hire a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. Now we need to hire a bookkeeper. Now we need to hire a maid. Now we need to hire a chef. Now I need to cook. Now I need to step up. Now we can't do this. So my job as a leader is to continue to evaluate mm -hmm. the quality of your life. And, you know, as a pastor, it's amazing that I want everybody to have a great quality of life. Well, how much more should I want that for the one who has taken my last name? Amen. And so if you want everybody around you, the people that work under you, your employees to have a quality of life, you got to look at your wife and say, how can I help improve her quality of life? And then it takes it out of the definition that she's just to help me. And you are like position yourself to help your husband, uh -huh. but I want to also help you. And I have to realize when you've helped me too much. So this last one is that you will literally give your life for the family and the kids, I have to protect that because I don't want you Absolutely. dying on the on the job. You know what I'm saying? I need to make sure that you're... We're, and so I think a lot of this is about pace. Mm -hmm. And there are some families that maybe you're just moving at too fast yep. pace. We slow the whole thing down. Yeah. Yeah. You got to just say, okay. And I think that's what you've done when you talk about uh -huh. being the leader uh -huh. and, and, and wanting our husbands to step up. It's like you've stepped in front of it. You know, I remember working because, you know, we work together. I remember when we were, I got pregnant with our second child, uh -huh. our church, we were maybe in church for like maybe three, four years, three years, four years. Um, and I got to a point where I was serving, serving, serving. And you came in and you said, you know what, this is your last week. You need to finish it up. Now you're coming home and you're going to spend the rest of the pregnancy in the house. I was kind of upset. Like, are you serious? Like, I, but but well, you people, led in that she, moment. She was nine months and a half <laughs> pregnant, walking around with high heels all through the church, trying to serve <laughs> like she was doing before she had a baby. And it was a crazy scene, and uh, I just had to bring it to a close. But that's what we should do. Yeah, it's definitely. Like, no, 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 this is too much. Let's let's talk about this. How can I help? Mm -hmm. You know, um, is there anything that you have for me? And this is just an example that I want man to do. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do in family me meetings. Mm -hmm. I start off and I say, sweetheart, is there any area that I can improve on? And you do the same. Mm -hmm. I always have to lead you into the question because even after all these years, you seem like you don't know what the heck to ask when we have a family meeting. <laughs> but here's the question. Is there any area that I can be better in when it comes to understanding you and mm -hmm. helping you? Mm -hmm. um, I don't. And that's an honest answer. Um, I don't. I think you do it very, very well. I think you do it very, very well. Well, you've and heard it first here. I'm a perfect <laughs> husband. <laughs> no, I mean, but but we have family meetings and we talk about these things. And I actually come to you for help. Like, I don't even wait for you now. You uh -huh. know, sometimes you can kind of see like, I'm oh, you need some help. Solving your problems. But yeah, I think sometimes I think the last conversation we had about this, I was telling you, look, I don't need you to do that for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was telling you back off, like, because uh -huh. I think you were overly concerned because after overcoming cancer and you taking care of everything, uh -huh. you kind of like if I cough, you're like, baby, are you OK? And I had to be like, baby, I'm good. Uh -huh. Like, you don't have to yeah, be concerned that much. Yeah. But, you know, that's. A lot of your response when I ask you what I can do, it's like, mm -hmm. no, is it just because you don't really think about what I can do? Or is it like, I don't know, it just seems I don't want people to hear like that as being disingenuine. Or is it just really genuine that you're just like, I don't really have an area that you need to improve on? Yeah. Because over my life, I've had so many areas to improve on. And you guys got to understand, I ask this question every week or every other week. So it's not like right. um, I got this list of things that you could do better than. No, I'm always working. Right. And I think when I improve myself, I improve our relationship. And But I did want to ask because I think it's just good an example. I think we should good. actually ask each other. Um, do you feel like I understand you as a woman? Mm -hmm. And if I do not, what are other areas that just stick out to you? And if there's none, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But is there anything while we're on that you could think of that I you're mean. like, 
<laughs> no, like seriously. No. Uh-huh. Now ask me this question in two more weeks from now. I might have something to, because well, we're it always, yeah. you know, it's, it. it's I'm, I'm not saying that you're perfect. And well, it, you have heard it first. Right I am a perfect husband. <laughs> All the trophies go to me. <laughs> I am just playing. Hey guys, we're out of time, everybody. Man, we have enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed these segments. They are five things every man needs to know about a woman in combination with five things that every woman needs to know about a man. You put these two things together and you have a better marriage and a better relationship. Amen. Praise God. Hey, um, we love doing life with you guys. We love your feedback. We love your questions. In the show notes, you can find information about how to get in touch with us. We are on social media all over the place, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are. Um, you can find us there. But also, if you have um, any questions, there's an email address that you can shoot them over to us. Every once in a while, we'll do a bonus segment where we just answer everyday questions from mm-hmm. real people, and we try to give you some real answers. And also, of course, we drop a new show, a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hit the subscribe button right now. Download the podcast so you can be the first to grab the content as it becomes available. We pray that this ministry and this uh, message and podcast is being a blessing to you. If it is, please let us know. We love you guys, and we'll see you real soon. Peace.